Hey guys, we're at Western Tech here today in our lab, and we're going to pull the camera and do some uh, close-ups here pretty quick, but we're going to talk about how to gap a spark plug in and what that looks like from what we talked about in class. Um, we're also going to talk about packaging again, and then we're going to talk about some different type of gappers. So what I'm going to do is have these guys kind of do some demonstrations as we discuss what, uh, what we're going to talk about in class. So that's um, first off, I want you to look at what the guys have done here on a particular motorcycle they're working on. Is, is not only for good documentation purposes, but we can take a look and see how that engine was running. We can take a look at the spark plug. And you guys, we're going to be looking at some charts this afternoon here, probably for the first time with you guys, that compare uh, different common spark plugs that we see from being fouled, being rich, being overheated, and, and so on and so on. So this is a neat way that they did this. A brand new spark plug, we talked about this in class today, comes some packaging something like this at least for NGK and all the, all the training we're going to focus on today is going to be NGK related it's going to have this cardboard uh, piece that's supposed to go over the tip and if we look at this in the installed you'll see that it's protected or the spark plug doesn't uh, go through there I have like I talked about this kind of looks funny when we do it like that I saw a whole box of spark plugs come this way um, unlikely but you know it always concerns us that we're going to want to check the gap so for uh, all you mechanics out there, guys, why don't you tell them, I'll, uh, who, whoever wants to talk about this, that we talked about this in class to where uh, are spark plugs pre-gapped? They are pre-gapped, but not to the specifications of the particular vehicle that they are going in. Right, Danny. So there's a lot of misconceptions out there where people are stating that, hey, I've got an NGK plug, so it's pre-gapped. Yeah, that's true that it's pre-gapped by NGK at whatever this spark plug is set at. Now, some of these spark plugs we noticed today from the from the chart actually tell us what it's gapped at. So we we did a dash 11 today, and anybody remember what that one was? 44,000. 44,000, okay. But that doesn't mean that that dash 11 that's supposed to be used in a vehicle is supposed to be set at 44,000. So, uh, you know, us technicians that are going to be, you know, perfection and go through everything we're supposed to do to service these, we're going to use a couple of different tools that are available to us here to set this gap at the exact um, specification that it's supposed to be at. Sound good? So to do that, what we did here is we took this plug, uh, DPR70A-9, and we're going to uh, check the gap as it is. And then we also notice here the student is using a service manual to figure out what that specified gap actually is. And if I can use your book here real quick. You can see here what we're trying to do is set this distance from that ground strap to the electrode to whatever the manufacturer wants us to use. Now, Danny, what did you say that yours is supposed to be? Uh, 24 to 28,000. 24 to 28,000. So once you get in here, we're going to do this plug. I'm going to get a close-up of this here. See if I can find it in the camera. Get that to focus in. And so you can see there, we're trying to set that distance. Now, Danny, I'm going to let you hold that. I'm going to try and we're going to start with this guy. So what you notice about this tool is you'll notice that it's a ramp. You'll see here that it's really thin. I'll try and do this on the bench here. It's really thin, and then it gets thicker and thicker and thicker. And if we could see the numbers on here, you could see, I can't read it too well. It looks like 20 thousandths up to 80. Yeah, I believe so. Okay. These are really cheap. What are these? Like a couple bucks? Yeah. Used to work at Riley's. Really cheap. A lot of guys have these on their keychains and whatnot. Uh, they're fairly accurate, really. But we're, we're going to talk about when not to use them. We would prefer typically to use a tool like this. And one thing that we'll notice about this, guys, is it's got metric and standard both on it. So on this side here, we got the metric. And then we have here the standard. Now, most of us typically are a lot more familiar with going to a spark plug and seeing something like... 28 thousandths or 44 thousandths of an inch and that's normal to us but I'll tell you what you get a lot of diehard guys that are out in the metric shops Kawasaki Suzuki Honda those guys will come up to you and they'll say something like yeah the the spark plug gap is a you know a 0.7 a 0.7 well to me you know that's 30 thousandths I can visualize 30 thousandths I cannot visualize uh, 76 hundredths of a millimeter I just I can't wrap my head around so I want you to I want you to know this would you guys agree with me too that you want to use what you're comfortable with whether it's standard or metric so that you at least just get the right measurement yeah. so you guys get to choose you can do whatever you want now Danny I think you were gonna mention something yeah according to the manual here it says uh, to gap it with a wire feeler gauge okay look at that they're gonna specify and tell us 
what type of tool to use. Now, in I, this is, I want to make a point here too. This is a climber manual, okay? So we've talked about that in some of our other videos. We like OEM manuals for great way to capture specifications. Climber here that they're specifying to use a wire type one, that's impressive. We will see, uh, we will not necessarily see those uh, in OEM manuals sometimes because what do you think Honda already expects you to know? To use the wire one. To use the wire one and to not use the ramp. And the reason why is we're going to show this real quick. Why don't we do this on a used plug? We're, we're really done with these. We already have that in the bike. Why don't you hold that up for me, Danny? I'm going to come into the camera here. And why don't you go ahead and insert that one in and actually get a measurement for that plug gap. So you can see this focus here. What he's doing is he's getting that just till it's just snug and then he's going to flip it over and he's going to read it and let's see if we can get a measure on that so that one what we're between 30 and 40 right about the middle what's it set it's at about 35 36 000. yeah 35 thousandths and we're not that particular down to a thousandth of an inch but we can obviously see what that's at okay now this one what i don't like about it go ahead and stick it back in there a lot of guys will take it just bend this to actually set the gap well look what they're let me get the camera under here stick it back in there when they bend that ah sorry i'm all over the place camera nope up oh, right there look what they're pushing against they're pushing against the spark plug electrode now if you're a, a iridium plug or a fine tip plug or something else what are you doing to the spark plug you're damaging it okay so that is not uh not desirable and that's why they're saying to use one of these so go ahead and find your 35 thousandths on there And now what he's going to do is just take that, and you're going to see we're going to get the same result. He's basically able to push that through. What was that one? That's 35. 35 right there. Now try and put a larger one in. You know how I always talk about that? Always go to the next largest one. 40,000. And the 40 will not go, okay? Just, if you forced it hard yeah. enough through there, okay? Now basically you've rolled it off that edge. makes it a little difficult. So I, I would feel safer with that other one where it just went through without any effort. Now here's the thing, guys. This tool here, now we have an actual adjuster that's going to hook into the ground strap and now I can bend it. Do you see how I can bend it either direction? That's how you properly would adjust the spark plug. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So this tool, we're not damaging the tip, we're not touching the tip, we're not going to have any problem with that, okay? You know, what I want to do, can I, can I take a look at this? Let me grab a spark plug here, is a lot of times we talk about you know, our customers end up just throwing a spark plug in because we sold it to them out of the box. I think that we, let me get you guys in, in the camera here. I think that we have a responsibility to, when we sell our customers spark plugs, I think it's a great idea for our parts department guys to be taking them out of the box and not and make sure that they're not this. That they haven't been dropped or we aren't into a, a smash situation. Now, we already, we already made a point of this here. It isn't even fully closed. There is a little bit of a gap in here, and I just beat this on the bench here, okay? Let's see if we can get that to focus here. It's trying to capture your somebody's shirt or something. Okay, you guys see that now? Yep. So uh, with, this, with this packaging in here like this, the chances of that getting damaged are probably unlikely, but you just never know. If you send your customer home who comes to your shop and you send them home with this brand new spark plug that's been damp, you know, accidentally closed up or whatnot, what's going to happen when they put in the vehicle? Weak ignition or non-existent. If these two are allowed to fully touch, now you have no gap to jump, you got no spark. They are going to fight that thing like crazy. Let's, let's make it difficult. Let's say it's like a 636 Ninja. How hard is it to change the spark plugs on these sport bikes where they're under a gas tank and everything else? So we really need some attention to detail. This isn't just as simple as just throw it in the bike, is it? Okay, so that's some good data to start. So now that I ruined this one, let's take our tool and let's adjust that back. And I'm going to uh, have Danny demonstrate that. He's going to, you got to hook it around the back. There you go. Now, hold on a second here. Quit moving. Okay, go ahead. You see? Now he's going to stop and check. He's going to stick his wire through there until he comes back with that appropriate size. Now let's say he went too far. So now take and hook the tool and just bend it the other way. Pretty cool. Now let me ask you something. While you guys are practicing and trying this or whatnot, would you agree with me that if, if you take and bend that 
back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. He did that on a real bike that eventually it's it's going to be weak and it's going to break. If that breaks, where does it go? <laughs> it goes down in the engine, so it's not a good deal. So you guys always want to think about this. There's there's a lot of different reasons to change a spark plug, but if you're running into a tuning situation where you kept reusing a plug till you figured out which one's the right one, and you put you know a bunch of dyno runs or you know you gap, you're playing around gapping it or whatever the reason is. Really think about just putting a new spark plug in it so that you don't have to worry about that tip getting fragile. Does that make sense? The last thing on the bench that I see here is just another version of this wire gapper. And that is definitely a tool that you want to uh, be able to use, you know, the same way as this one. Does that make sense? Yep. All right. Uh, any uh, questions about spark plug gapping? You know, I'm going to add one last little thing that we haven't talked about yet. Uh, Al and I used this the other day. I have to apologize in the dang video here is where did we find that chart i've got that i've got the ngk book here these guys are going to find a chart here uh, i'm going to show this too in on ngk's website or in the book you can see here that they tell us everything about those letters i'm not going to go over all of those here for youtube but you can see that they all designate like the diameter of the plug the heat range of the plug special features about the plug the reach of the plug the reach would be how long the threads are so we don't hit the piston but what's really neat about this book here this chart here, you guys are going to see me pull this up in the classroom as well, but what's so neat about this is we could take our spark plug here, and from our numbers here, we got DPR 80A-9, so we can determine what size a spark plug it is. With a D, uh, a D is the designation. We know that, let, hold this page, you already saw that? Yes. Okay, so it's a 12 millimeter, so we could go to the 12 millimeter here. Okay, spark plug thread. Okay, now we've got choices here, and this is where people get into trouble. We got cast iron heads or aluminum heads. Not, you know, other than old iron head sporties, we've been dealing with aluminum heads since the 60s, right? So we're going to go to aluminum heads, and then it says with a torque wrench or without. Now, I've also seen this. Do you see how this says with a gasket and a, without a gasket on the iron heads? So I go over here to aluminum, and let's say we're going to use a torque wrench, and I draw a line across from the 12 millimeter, and it says here that on this particular plug, the NGK is recommending 10.8 to 14.5 foot-pounds. When Al and I went and looked up the CBR 1000 and looked it up out of the manual, they gave us a specification of 11 foot-pounds, foot and it seemed to be nice and close to this recommendation. Now listen to me on this. My, my ultimate recommendation is use what the manufacturer says to use. If that is not available, this is going to be a pretty safe chart, but you're always, you're always taking a little bit of a risk. The other thing that you'll notice here that is kind of cool is it says uh, with a torque wrench or without. So on this particular one, you'll notice here is what they say to do is once the spark plug touches the head, go to a half turn or two-thirds of a turn once you make contact. Do you get that? Not after you crush the gasket, once you make contact, and that's with a new spark plug. And then it says, or 180 to 240 degrees. You know, on NGK's website, there's all kinds of great videos of installation tips and different things like that that you guys can watch. There's a lot of controversy. Do you use anti-seize on the threads? Should you not use anti-seize? Does it affect it? I'm a huge fan of using just a little dab or smear anti-seize on the threads. You got a steel plug going aluminum head. I think that's a great recommendation but uh, once again there's always more than one way to skin a cat so it's something uh, that's worth looking into the torque specifications if you have a spark plug that comes loose not only do you have a loss of compression but eventually if this vibrates out and goes flying out of there now you've got spark running around until that engine dies and if you have any fuel or gas leaks you're gonna have a bad day yeah. absolutely so these are some of the different things that I'm going to recommend as our introduction into spark plugs here sound good yeah.